Our dreams arise from our imaginations. They belong to us. We owe it to ourselves to try and realize them. You learn so much more when you are taking things personally. Every day you have to show up and like you have to focus on the thing you're doing. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe you have an amazing gift inside you that I want to see explode out onto the world. So let's get your motivation to a 10 and get you believing in you. Grab a snack and chew on today's lessons from a woman who grew up in Kenya and feared acting because of outside forces to becoming the first Kenyan to win an Academy Award. She's Lupita Nonyo, and here's my take on her top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Let's kick things off with rule number one, ignore the naysayers. When I watched The Color Purple and saw Oprah and Whoopi Goldberg, a seed was planted in my heart to be an actor, but I dared not water it in public. You see, being an actor wasn't an honorable thing to do, especially not for a politician's daughter. It was thing, it's something that a child did and grown-up children did, but not anyone else. Uh, I pursued acting opportunities on the side, and as long as it was extracurricular and not my focus, it felt safe and acceptable. M mind you, my parents never put any pressure on me to be one thing or another, but it was the expectations from the larger society that kept me ashamed of the real desire of my heart. And so I got down to the most important work, figuring out what steps would get me to being an actor the actor I wanted so badly to be. I had an action plan, something to work towards, getting into the Yale School of Drama for acting training. To go after my goal to attend the Yale School of Drama meant that I would have to confront my fear of failure, of not being good enough. As I boarded the plane to the US, there were naysayers in my head telling me I was crazy that I shouldn't even bother over 900 people audition for 15 spots each year. And yet there was a part of me that knew I could do it, even when the part of me that said it was impossible was louder. Our dreams arise from our imaginations. They belong to us. We owe it to ourselves to try and realize them. To encourage myself, I wrote in my diary on the 23rd of August, 2008, I have this dream to and desire to be an actor, and it dwarfs me. But it is my dream, goddammit, I made it up. How can what I dream up defeat me? Rule number two, stay fresh. Yale was, those three years were the best years of my school life, hands down. And uh, at the beginning, of course, I was like, first of all, how on earth did I get in? <laughs> and, uh, but the dean gave this talk, a of, of, of first um, orientation talk, and he talked about the imposter syndrome and how everyone in the room was probably going through that feeling. Like, I, don't, I tricked them into getting here. And um, he was reassuring us that we were all going through it. And indeed, I was sitting next to my classmates, and some of us broke down crying because we were like, yes, I thought I was on my own, but no, we we're together. And you know, it was just, it was so reassuring to recognize that almost every artist feels that way and that mm. therefore you're not as unique as you think you are and that's a good thing you know they often feel um, that way even after years of oh working yeah professionally. always yeah. always and the thing about acting is that you're always um, taking on new stuff you're mm -hmm. taking on a new role so just as soon as you feel like an expert in something you have to leave it and go on to a totally new thing and be and be ignorant and curious and yeah fresh again and that's what so wonderful it's it's what's wonderful and what's extremely frustrating about 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 this business rule number three live in the moment there are a lot of brutal moments in this film and one particularly harrowing moment is when you are whipped by both your slave master and Solomon mm -hmm. talk to us about 
how you prepared to play that scene emotionally and mentally. And I know the evening before was very difficult for you. Talk to us about that. Well, yeah, so the evening before I shot that scene, uh, we'd done another scene in which I needed the whips, the, the scars from before Patsy is that epic whipping. And it had taken four hours to do those scars. And so when I looked at the call sheet for the next day, I saw that it was gonna be six hours in the makeup chair. And I was just like, I'm not doing that. So I suggested to Kala Devi, the makeup artist, that I remain with the scars on my back so that we cut our work in half for the next day's work. Mm. And I went home with these scars on my back and I, I could only sleep on my belly because I didn't want to mess them up. And they just haunted me, you know? They were so present and I was so uncomfortable. And I had trouble sleeping the whole time I was doing 12 Years of Sleep, but that night I got even less sleep. But it occurred to me as I was weeping in the night that my discomfort was temporary and Patsy's wasn't. And it still makes me cry. And I had been given this privilege to bring her back to life and it just quietened my soul and prepared me for the next day's work. Is it emotionally hard to still now disconnect yourself with everything that you felt while filming? I mean, I feel, you know, the best of Patsy remains in me. Mm. Um, the lessons I learned about the value of presence and being in the present moment, I feel like that lesson is what's helping me survive this season. Mm -hmm. um, Patsy had to live in the present moment because she had a master that was volatile and dangerous. So she had to be prepared for anything at any time. And that lesson, living in the moment, was just um, reinforced um, mm -hmm. for me. And um, so that remains. Rule number four, write down your goals and dreams. Four, do not underestimate the power of writing your dreams and goals down. Right before I got cast in 12 Years a Slave, I wrote in my diary what kind of work I wanted to do. I envisioned, uh, this was on May 4th, 2012, that I wanted to make meaningful films that affect change in people's understanding of and commitment to the world we live in. I also wrote that I wanted to visit New Orleans for a week. On May 13th, I booked 12 Years a Slave. And on June 6th, I would be in Louisiana working on the film for five weeks. Rule number five, be authentic. A lot of people look at you as, as a symbol of um, black girl healing oh. in a lot of ways. And I think sometimes when you hold such a high standard, I say what I believe in. And, and so it doesn't feel uh, like labor. It actually feels like an opportunity, you know. And I, I, I'm, it touches me when people say, I say these things about what I mean. I didn't seek that. I didn't, that was not my intention. But I feel that, you know, like Fiona in this story, her intention was to play chess. She couldn't have known that she would pull her family out of poverty yeah. uh, by doing that. She also couldn't have known that she would give me a job mm -hmm. by playing chess and yet she has and so I think when you follow your dream you follow your passion you're so much more used than you even realize you're gonna be and so for me when you say that to me it's just a, a, an encouragement for me to keep going doing the thing I love which is acting and that has given me a platform to say things and, and be things to, to people way more than the, the thing that I'm passionate about Rule number six find your path I always loved to perform. I was the child who preferred to sit in my cupboard in, in the closet and play with my Barbies in the dark and then go outside and like ride a bike. Huh. Um, yeah, I, I loved make believe and my mom tells this story about when I was like three. I hadn't uh, even been to school yet, but she had a guest over and I spun this tale about how I went to school and what I'd, I'd had for lunch and what uniform I wore and who I'd played with and everything. And my mother was just like, this child is bound to be in, in the performing arts. <laughs> yeah, so it was an early um, passion. And then I, it wasn't until I watched um, 
uh, the color purple that I thought, oh, I, maybe I could do this uh, for in my life because you know it was like people that looked like me, that, and um, I remember Who Whoopi Goldberg especially really moved me. And yeah, that was the first time that I thought, oh, maybe I could be an actor. But it took a while before um, I actually um, uttered it out loud and said that that's what I wanted to do. Rule number seven: Reach out to your stretcher bearers. Reach out to your stretcher bearers. This is a concept I carried with me from a high school Bible teaching. It speaks of a time when Jesus was teaching a crowd of people that had come from all over. Some men came late, carrying their paralyzed friend on a stretcher. It was so crowded around Jesus, so they decided to go up on the roof, take out the tiles, and lower the man into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith and how much love they had, he cured the man instantly of his paralysis. My teacher in her message encouraged us to make sure we too had those stretcher bearers in our lives, at least four people who would carry us to healing and safety when we can't do it for ourselves. The people who will remind you that you are not alone when your emotions get the best of you. Rule number eight, connect emotionally. The gem or the treasure that is acting is that you actually get to put yourself in someone else's shoes, and there is a <clears throat> the it, I I learn you learn so much more when you are taking things personally, and so for me to have to take slavery personally uh, is something that I can never uh, unlearn. You know, and I had learned about slavery theoretically, analytically, but what. 12 Years a Slave gave me was to learn about it emotionally and physically. And that kind of learning is so deep. And, uh, you know, I, I just went to the, the opening of the National <clears throat> Museum of African American History and mm -hmm. Culture and, you know, walking through the halls and visiting, revisiting slavery and going up to emancipation, civil rights and all that and ending up in a room where Patsy's dress is on display. I mean, mm. it, it it's so alive for me. And it, uh, it, it, I, I, I delved into that history at that time and I will never be the same again, you mm -hmm. know? And I think that's what's so powerful about cinema is that you can actually have a moment to take someone else's life personally. And, uh, and in doing so, hopefully it encourages empathy and you know and that we share a humanity and we can share in those experiences in a very real and tangible way and hopefully draw closer to each other. Rule number nine, work hard. Doing a play takes stamina. Mm. And because you have to do the whole thing every single day and you have to do it like you've never done it before. And that's why I wanted to do a play because it makes you, it brings, um, you know, a regimen and a, it just is a good workout for acting. And so with Black Panther, one of the things that I needed stamina for was the fighting, the all the mm -hmm. the, the 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 physical challenge. And so I went straight into we went into a six week boot camp and it came in very handy, you know, that kind of like diligence, just so you know, get there and do the work. And it also helped me get over the fact that I was part of Black Panther. Yes. You know, because it takes work. Every day you have to show up and yeah. like you have to focus on the thing you're doing. You have to focus on that one ring blade and, and what it's doing. So yeah, I'd say stamina. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips. Have fun. The category is animals and you're gonna uh, act out animals. You can't talk. Okay. You just have to move and be an animal that I'm gonna guess. Okay. And so you'll stand up if you okay. want to. Okay, and here it goes. I'm gonna oh, take off my you shoes. You can make noises. Oh, you're getting serious. All right. Okay. Oh, you're a kangaroo. Uh, no, you're a bunny. Yes. Uh, okay. You're an elephant. You're a horse? You're very good at this. Are you a, a pig? Yes. <laughs> mm. A flamenco. Uh, 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 ostrich. Uh, uh, a, a, a giraffe. Yes. Uh -oh. <laughs> a woodpecker. <laughs> You're a 
fly or a bee? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> now I've got three very special bonus clips from Lupita around working in a great environment opening yourself up for failure and fighting for equality. But before that, I want you to make a commitment of the day. Don't just watch another video and continue on with your day. If you were moved by this in any stretch, write down in the comments below how you're gonna commit yourself to changing your life or your business. Leave it down below, I'm really curious to find out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love, I'll see you soon, and enjoy the bonus clips. Acting is not like math, where there is only one correct answer to the problem, and once you've figured out the formula, you're all set. In acting, like in life, sometimes coming up with the wrong answer to the problem is the best way to figure out the formula for yourself. In acting school, you are expected to fail and fail publicly a lot. It is the constant exposure to failure that frees you from the strongholds of, e of the ego and allows you to embrace vulnerability. And it is in embracing vulnerability that you can surprise yourself in performance and share something really special about human nature. Without the possibility of being bad, you will never be extraordinary. And so, I resolved to operate from a sense of self that was louder than my critic and faster than my worry. It is only in that space that you can truly be free and innovate. Michael is Metro. fire and Chotel is water. And both elements are intriguing, mysterious, and dangerous. And that was what it was like working with them. And I think that's why they make such good, they make such good scene partners because they have such different energies, you know. Michael, Anything can happen with Michael at any time, so he keeps you on your feet. And with Chuatel, especially with this character he's playing, he had, uh, he was he was grounded and he was still and he was present. He was focused and he was calm. And I think he really did set the culture on the set, you know, and allowed it for us to do this with ease. He's also a very efficient actor, mm. you know. So with both of them, you know, you go in and you go in 110% and then you come out and you're totally out and, and you're, you're going paintballing and, and you know, and, and dancing and stuff like that. So it was good to have that kind of work ethic where we're fully focused for the time in which we're, we're making, bringing the story back to life and then we leave it. I don't remember ever talking about the, the, the story, like the script. Mm -hmm. um, very little, very little did we speak about the script offset. And um, yeah, it was about just trusting that we were each doing our individual work and then coming full to like let go and give the scene, just leave everything in the scene. Get to decide what kind of king you are going to be. Don't freeze. It was such a breath of fresh air, you know, to see um, men and women um, occupying their, just living in their power without one dwarfing the other. Mm -hmm. And to me, it was just like a, a um, reflective of the fact that sexism is learned at the end of the day and everything that comes with it, you know? And so to see an example of a society that's not, that doesn't have that, the gender is not the fabric um, with which society is built necessarily, you know, that it's functioning um, wholesomely, you know? The delineations of sex are not that um, oppressive. And that's really cool and it's possible. So let me give you the one word secret to happiness. One word. This is all you need to be happy. It's the most important word ever. If you had to think of one word that's most important to you or that sums you up or that would be kind of like a little beacon. Hey Believe Nation, if you want to know what the most important one word is for Tony Robbins, Gary Vaynerchuk, Oprah Winfrey, Will I Am, and Howard Schultz, I have a very special secret video for you. Check the description for details.